All right, everybody out there in the Craft Chest Nation, it's our Craft Chest here, and it's back to reality time from here on out. I am, uh, I'm done with all the filth, Lauren filth, and the negativity of the world. And so we're going to get back into it where we're going to be doing some unboxing videos. Tonight, the unboxing is going to be some car audio. And what I have in this box right here is some SCAR audio. As you see, I already cut the little label off because people got this thing about addresses and all this. Uh, even though half the time they can't even find my house to deliver this stuff. But here we go because I'm zoomed in. A little different. Not using XSplit. I'm just using raw Logitech drivers on my C920 Pro. And so we're going to see how this turns out. Hopefully the audio is good. The video is good. So let's get into it and cut this box open. This is going to be a one take. And hopefully I don't mess it up because this is live recording going on here. All right, so let's cut this open. Let's see how this is packed up. Uh, got this off of Amazon, of course. I could have got it from SCAR, but the prices were the same uh, as far as the items that I wanted. Of course, uh, they're pretty good about packing stuff here. And plus the box will have packing. Now, one thing that I wanted to do this time, and I'm going to show you here, is that I got me a pack of uh, Permatex, and I usually keep this. And what this is is dielectric grease. And especially in doors and places that might have moisture accumulate, even though I'm using OFC wire, sometimes you don't get that pure copper or good enough copper terminals. And if you're not soldering like doors, normally in doors I don't bother with soldering because you might want to change out your driver or whatever the case may be. So normally I just use the spade terminals uh, in the doors. And one thing that I didn't do last time that I should have done was add a little dielectric grease after I get a secure connection just over the top, you know, around the connector to keep the moisture out of it. And that'll actually make a better connection on that. That's something that I'm really surprised I've never seen anybody actually say to do. You don't have to gob it up. You're not siliconing it. Just add a little bit of this dielectric grease to make sure your connection uh, stays secure for your electrical connection. If it's good enough for your spark plug, it's good enough for your spark plug boots, it's good enough for your electronics as far as uh, your speakers are concerned. All right, so the first box is probably, and this little one's gonna be the Silt Dome tweeters. And what we have here are the TWS-01s, and I'll get a little close-up shot here for you. SCAR Audio right there. 80 watt RMS, and we're not looking to be overpowering. If I see where it doesn't match, I'll take these out and do another little project. Um, I do have a, a Bluetooth project that I'm working on, so if this isn't enough for the car, I'll almost definitely take these out and use them for a Bluetooth project that I have going on. And of course, here is the real package to it. Ooh, that's a nice little box going on right there. Oh, yeah, look at this, 92 dB sensitivity. Let me read this off. 80 watts, 4 ohm impedance, neodymium magnets, 2,000 to 20,000 frequency. And let's have a look at these. Let's, uh, let's cut the tape here and have a quick look at these uh, tweeters. And you know what? A little later on, maybe in another video, uh, I'll probably hook these up uh, to the little Bluetooth amplifier just to get a little sound check, make sure everything's working properly. Uh, in the box here, of course, they're going to give you capacitors and your crossovers here uh, for the uh, base blockers, basically, is what that is. And a little snicker pack, I think that's what people call these now. And I've noticed that some of the companies out there are starting to do this snicker pack rather than these big, gigantic crossover packs just like this because of the popularity of people doing their C-pillar and A-pillar uh, in the front where you can... Uh, run these in and not have to have a super long wire and be stuffed up under the dashboard So I'm kind of like that right there for sure. These already are pre-terminated right here. That'll make life super easy also uh, They do come with these little tweeter cups and the location that I'm gonna put these are in the doors and Hopefully this is gonna work out just fine. This should be perfect size for that particular spot because it is a shallow mount area that I'm going to be putting it in and of course here are the little silt dome tweeters that we have going on these are also pre-terminated to go into the crossover as you can see right here and here are the little tweeters now let's see if these are directional in this cup I'm pretty sure they're directional in this cup here but 
Uh, yeah, and they also have a, uh, a screw, a go-through screw, if you just wanted to mount these like this. So I like that. So if I just wanted to mount these flat, just facing out, uh, that is a very good design on these. I need more light. Let's see if I can get some more light on here. Oosh. Ah, there we go. Add a little bit more light to the situation here. And so there we go. See that little screw hole right there? So anybody that's uh, speaker designers with speakers like this, that right there, I'm telling you, people love those. So be sure and do it. So that's a good looking speaker. Good little tweeter right here, silk dome, of course, 80 watt max. We're not probably going to be pushing half of that to it. Uh, last real system that I had, I only had a Punch 30 way back in the day running for years and years and years and years. And then I think I changed that to a 45 and ran that for years and years and years. And then after that, uh, switched over to Sony Explode first gen whenever it came out. Now here's the second box. Whoa. Wow. Let me move this to the side. This actually has some weight to it. Wow. Ooh, man. Let me tell you what. Dang, dude. That right there is a good, man. What is that about? That's got to be, that's over 10 pounds on these drivers here. And what these are, are some six and a half. We'll see if they're boxed inside of a box here before I get all excited. No, this is brown box. But these are some six and a half inch, and we'll get you the model number on these as soon as I bust them open because I honestly don't remember. I just remember shopping around looking for what I want for some door replacements at the moment, pre-custom door fab. Uh, this right here is just, just interim. Um, and if I like them good enough, I'm gonna actually get some more and do a uh, probably two or maybe even three of these in the door panels. And that is a beefy six and a half inch right here. Let's give you a good little look at this six and a half by Scar. Oh yeah, and let's give you a little profile shot. Uh, this one actually has a pole vent uh, right through here, very impressive. And yeah, oh wow, yeah, that's a nice stiff, nice stiff suspension on this. Uh, they do have the spade terminals on them right here. And the model number on this is the FSX65 for ohm. And these are 300 watt max 150 RMS. And let me give you a look at the motor here. Let's see if I can give you a good centered up look at the motor. Give you a little side profile. Maybe even try to get in there and get you a shot of the spider. And let me roll it to the terminals. Because one thing a lot of people like to see are the tensile leads. And of course these are just six and a half drivers. But those are some pretty chunky uh, single tensile leads going inside of there. Yeah. Good quality on that. But so yeah. Scar Audio six and a half um fs x 65 and that right there will do and let me show you what i actually had in there let me grab it right quick this is what was actually in it <sighs> and it fell, off, it fell off the refrigerator so it bent itself it wasn't in this bad of shape before this is my fault i had it on the refrigerator but i was running some blah punk uh four-way coaxial speakers in there before and I'm gonna tell you something I'm gonna bend this back out this is actually gonna be part of that little Bluetooth project um, that I was talking about a little earlier but let's do a little side-by-side -side right quick and then I think we'll wrap it up so here is the blah punk motor and the magnet and these are ferrite magnets I'm quite sure on both of them and you can see the size difference let me grab it from the side here and show you the size difference right here and i'm kind of about a funky angle with the microphone that's why i'm holding it like i am and so yes yeah, quite a bit of difference in size right there of course the uh, face plate never mind that bend on the blob punk once again that's my fault so here is the uh, face and the size different this one's got a nice gasket around it if you see right there and this one did not come with a gasket on it uh, it may be in the box i just didn't use it so there, yeah, and you can definitely tell the size difference in the two right here. And I'll definitely, in a future video, we'll hook up a uh, one of the six and a halves and one of the tweeters on the little Bluetooth uh, amplifier that I have going on. 
and give you a little sound demo before I put it in the car. And then after we get in the car, we'll do a sound check there. There's nothing in there right now, so I can't give you a before and after on that. Uh, so, yeah, quite impressed. Man, that is a beefy six and a half. The Scar Audio, uh, they make some pretty good products. I haven't heard anybody ever say anything sideways about Scar Audio. All right, just, you know, they're a decent company. A lot of people blame them or uh, accuse them of cookie cutter designs, but... There are certain little things that they do to make them their own. So everybody's got their little, you know, patents and whatnot. And of course, these are made in China. America, made in China. There's nothing we can do about that. So there you go. And this box right here I'm going to use for a uh, Christmas present wrap. So there. And this is my first Christmas present to myself. I like that box. That is a clean box, man. Good job, Scar. Especially on a presentation for uh, tweeters. All right, I wish I would have got that with this. I'm a box man. I don't know. I love boxes. I love putting boxes like this on display. I wish these had that same type of style box. And there you go. So we got some silk dome tweeters. We got the six and a half. We got some dielectric grease. And really, I am very surprised that nobody has... I, I, I haven't seen it anyway. Have you guys ever seen anybody uh, recommend putting a dab of dielectric grease on your terminals? I guess everybody solders, and that's why they don't do it. I'm not that pro, I guess. There are certain things that I solder and certain things I don't. But still, protects your connections from moisture and corrosion. Even if you're using OFC, not everything that you're connecting in there is OFC. Using OFC solder, I don't know. You tell me. Maybe you are. Man, that thing dropped off that refrigerator and bit the crap out of that. Look at that. We'll bend it back out. That's no big deal. Not a big deal. All right, everybody. It's a crap of the mind. Woo! Go out there and have some fun. Have yourself a Merry Christmas. And we'll see you tomorrow with another unboxing from Crimson Dawn Lightsabers. Woo!